Algebra 1, 10.1c, rational expressions as additive inverses, opposites. I want you to remember that this video description has links to previous similar or helpful videos if you get stuck, okay? We can simplify rational expressions by factoring the numerator and denominator first. So rational expressions cannot be simplified until after we've factored the numerator and denominator. When we have a rational expression that is opposites, when the numerator and denominator are additive inverses of each other, like x minus y over y minus x, the denominator can be factored with a negative 1 as, here's our denominator, y minus x. We can do a negative 1 times a negative y plus x. See? This was a positive y and then minus x. We do a negative y plus x. And if we multiply this times a negative 1, it's going to equal this, all right? I know this is really confusing, but stick with me because I'm going to make it look a lot easier so you'll understand. Now that we did this, by multiplying it by a negative 1, this has an x minus y, just like the numerator, so we can cancel it out, see? We can multiply either the numerator or denominator by that negative 1 to swap the variables around to match the other one, then we can divide them out. So we're going to use actual numbers to explain this. So this is what I just did, okay, with the x minus y, y minus x. Now, let's say x was a 5 and y was a 2. So now we've got 5 minus 2 over 2 minus 5, right? So just pay attention to this denominator for now because that's what we worked on here. If we have 2 minus 5, we know that's a negative 3, right? Well, 2 minus 5 can also be negative 2 plus 5, okay? A negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3, right? If we multiply that by a negative 1, we go back to our negative 3, don't we? So this negative 1 times negative 2 plus 5 is the same thing as 2 minus 5. So that's something. And this is also the same thing as this. If we have 5 minus 2 that looks just like the numerator, that's a 3, isn't it? And when we multiply it by a negative 1, we get our negative 3. So these are the same as each other. These are the same as each other. And these are the same as each other. They're just written in different ways. See? The signs are different. And when we multiply this one by a negative 1, we get, we're get we back to our negative 3. So you can see what I did. These are all equal to each other. These are all equivalent for the denominator. Okay, but now that we've got it written like this, we've got this 5 minus 2, it looks just like the numerator. And now we can cancel it out. See, we've got a negative 1 x minus y, and the numerator is x minus y. We can cancel that out, and the only thing that's left is a negative 1. See, isn't that weird how that works? All right, and you're going to want to write this down how I did this, okay? If the numerator and denominator are opposites, additive inverses, the rational expression is going to be equal to a negative 1. Take a look at this. We've got 5 minus 2 over 2 minus 5, right? Well, if we have 5 minus 2, that's a th positive 3, isn't it? And if we have 2 minus 5, that's a negative 3. Well, a positive 3 over a negative 3 gives us a negative 1, doesn't it? Because the numerator and denominator are the same, and it's a negative. As we said in the last video, the fundamental property of rational expression says if we've got p over q, and q is not equal to 0, because remember the denominator is not 0. This is our rational expression, p over q, and k represents any polynomial, a trinomial, a binomial, could be anything, all right? And that's not equal to 0 either, okay? But k is some kind of polynomial. Then if we have p times the polynomial over q times that polynomial, that same polynomial, we can cancel them out and end up back with p over q. That's identity property, isn't it? See? Just like we did here. All right? So now, look at this. We've got a binomial square, 4x squared minus 9. That's a binomial square, isn't it? We can factor that as 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Now, if you forgot how to do binomial squares, there's a link in this description that'll get you there, okay? And then you can come back to this one. Just remember to come back to video 10.1c, all right? And then watch this video again once you've reviewed how to do that. And the 6 minus 4x can be factored as 2 times 3 minus 2x. See? That would be the 6 
minus 4x. See? So now we factored the numerator and denominator. Now we can do our negative 1, see? And by multiplying this 3 minus 2x by this negative 1, we can flip it around to be 2x minus 3, see? Just like we did over here, all right? So now we can cancel these out, can't we? And all we're left with is 2x plus 3 over 2 times negative 1, which is a negative 2, see? And now this is simplified. It's factored out for the numerator and denominator, and it's simplified. And this, because there's a negative 2 at the bottom, could also be written like this, couldn't it? With the negative sign in front of the entire fractional rational expression, see? We could also write it with the negative sign up here, couldn't we? That's all the same thing, all right? So now this you are going to want to write down, okay? You want to be careful of the signs because every single one of these equals a negative 1. So look at what they look like. And I did it with the x variable, and I did it with real numbers so you could see. If you have x plus 3 divided by negative x minus 3, that's going to equal a negative 1. What if x was a 5, okay? 5 plus 3 is an 8. Negative 5 minus 3 is a negative 8. That's a negative 1, isn't it? So this would give us a negative 1, all right? It's really important you put all of these in your notes so that you could look at them and say, oh, that looks like it's going to, that's what the negative 1 looks like, okay, as a rational expression. Now we've got negative x plus 3 over negative 3 plus x. That equals negative 1 because if x is a 5, and we've got negative 5 plus 3, well, that's a negative 2. And if we've got negative 3 plus 5, that's a positive 2. Negative 2 over positive 2 is a negative 1, isn't it? And if we have negative 3 minus x over x plus 3, that's negative 1. If we have a negative 3 minus 5, that's a negative 8. And 5 plus 3 is 8. Negative 8 over positive 8 is a negative 1. And if we have 3 minus x over x minus 3, that's a negative 1. That's just like the problem we just did over here, see, with the x and the y. Because if we had 3 minus 5, that's a negative 2. Over 5 minus 3, that's a positive 2. That gives us a negative 1, see? So all of these are going to give you a negative 1. So it's really important that you put this into your notes, all right? Now, I also wanted to show you, if you have 3 minus x over 3 plus x, this one is already in lowest terms. This one does not equal negative 1. Now, why is it that this one doesn't equal negative 1, but these do? Take a look at their signs. This is a positive and a negative. Well, that's got a positive and a negative. But this one has a negative in front of the negative. See? There's two negatives down here. Here's a positive and a positive. Here's a negative. Just like that is a negative. But look. There's two negatives. So see why that equals negative 1? See that? This one only has one negative sign. This one has two. This one has two. See that? All right. So remember, the denominator can't be a 0. And remember, we can only cancel factors, not terms. When you see x plus y plus z, that's three terms. But x, y, and z together, that's three factors. That's one term. See? All right, our next video, 10.2a, we're going to talk about rational expressions, and we're going to multiply and simplify them. If you want to go back to watch what are rational expressions or how to simplify them or how to factor the polynomials, the entire playlist is going to be in this description, all right? And hopefully that will help you. If you don't remember how to factor polynomials, you're going to be lost. So watch the factoring videos and review Chapter 6, and you'll be okay, all right? You want to be able to say, yeah, I can factor a trinomial, I can factor a binomial square. All right, I'll see you next video. Bye.